Tucker and today I'll be taking you through what I like to think of as a very simple but effective 30 shot pool workout. The purposes of the workout are not only to make you better and more consistent at the 30 shots that we're going to be shooting, but my main objective is to help you start to improve your overall pool perception. And by that, I mean how you physically look at pool shots and how you mentally visualize or imagine them happening. We all look at pool shots differently. Our minds all perceive them differently. And it's a very difficult thing for an instructor to help you with because they cannot get inside your head and see the picture that you're seeing or you're imagining. All the instructors, we can pick out flaws in your stance, grip, alignment, stroke, and so forth, and we're very quick to do so. But the subject of perception is not taught enough, and I want to help you today be able to start to teach yourself, know how you're looking at the shots, and how this could be affecting your game. If you're perceiving certain shots improperly, you're going to have to be very luckily, lucky to make any of those shots when they come up. What I want to teach you are some fact-based skills that give you the answers to how you're looking at a pool shot, how that shot has to be struck. And I want you to have a very observing mind as we do this. Okay? I want to cover some of the tools and methods that I'll be referring to as we work our way through the shots. That way I won't have to stop and do it later on. And the first thing I want to discuss is a little bit about my method of aim, which is called contact point to contact point, matching contact points, parallel contact points. And what I've done in my method is I've numbered the contact points on the object ball and the cue ball. And today we're going to use one of those shots as a major uh, reference. Let me just explain really quick how contact point to contact point works. If this is my object ball and I want to shoot it in that corner pocket, we all know how to walk up and pick out, okay, here's my contact point. Okay. Well, we'll say it's on this line right here. The cue ball has a matching contact point. And that contact point would be on a parallel line. Okay, so these lines are parallel. Not This point is not pointing to the pocket. Parallel contact points, matching contact points. What I've done is I've numbered all these contact points on the front of the object ball and put the same identical numbers along the front of my cue ball. One of the shots that I've numbered is called zero to zero. And that's when you want the object ball to travel straight down the table, like these shots we, we have over here. These are going to be the first five shots we're going to shoot in our workout today. Five shots along the right-hand side rail. And the cue ball is going to be on this, this first diamond here, about a half an inch off the rail. We're going to pocket one shot at a time, but all five of them up there. So the contact point for each one of these shots is zero. Zero zero and so forth. Boom. And we have five different shots, five different angles, but the contact point for each one is the same and the contact point on the cue ball is always going to be the same. It's the spot that's pointing straight up the table, the spot closest to the end rail, and we're going to be referring to that as zero. Now in the first group of shots, that's the true, true contact point. It's going to be this zero, much like that zero. So the contact point line is parallel to maybe your aiming. For some of you that like to aim with your tip or your stick down there, the contact point is always parallel to your aiming line with the stick. Unless you're straight in, then the contact point and the aiming line, they're both the same. So I'll be referring to the zero quite often, and that's what I want to help, what I want to use to help you improve your perception. Because I believe that this is one area of the game where misses are not blamed enough. Everybody blames, I hit this ball wrong, uh, or a mechanical reason, my stroke was off. 
this spot right here that usually you're standing behind the cue ball you can't physically see it so you're thinking about it so that's an area of perception quite often I think many players because we're doing it all on a subconscious level their perception is not as good as other players you have some people that perceive pocket billiards perfectly very very natural like good hand-eye coordination or good memory skills not everybody has the same level of perception but what I want to teach you is how to identify how you're looking at the balls so you can improve your own perception you're going to have to be very patient and very observing and when you miss a shot all the strokes we're going to be using today are pretty simple because we're not going to use any power strokes or excessive spin shots so when you're shooting the shots I want you to stay as still as possible keep your follow through to a minimum don't be staring the strokes at the end okay. another tool we're going to be using it's called a sharpshooter aiming sticker and I already have some set up for our next group of shots and what the sharpshooter does is it's like a ghost ball training tool or a tip aiming training tool and it gives you the answer what you would do is you would place the object ball on this well let me show you how to put it on the table if you want to pocket a ball practice a shot in that corner pocket here on this board you take this line right here and you point it towards the center of the pocket let me peel it off for you, it comes on a piece of paper peels on and off, fairly simple I'm not going to stick it in, I'm going to stick it to the table I would point this line to the center of the pocket line it up the best I can and then maybe you could tap an object ball on the center dot now, no matter where your cue ball is, you would practice replacing the ghost ball, okay, this outer circle, or you could practice aiming your tip to this white circle that has a little tiny red dot in it also, okay. Sharpshooter aiming stickers, and they peel on and off, fairly simple, if you're careful and you don't wrinkle it, you can stick it back on the paper, and they're reusable. My friend and partner, uh, Ray McNamara, he's the inventor of these, and they work very well. They also give you answers, and that's what I want to give you, aiming answers. All right, our first group of shots, five down, down the right-hand side rail, zero to zero contact point. I'm going to set that right up, and we'll start hitting some balls. Now everybody's favorite part. We finally get to hit some balls. Let me show you how to set up our first five shots. Cue balls on this first diamond here, you want it anywhere from a quarter inch to an inch off the rail. You hardcore players, you want to freeze it up. Or when you get better at the workout and you want to freeze it up, go ahead. Right now I want to give you a little bit of leeway. The first shot will start on the middle diamond. And the object balls are all going to be a quarter inch or a half an inch off the rail. I'm going to shoot the one ball from here, then the two ball, three, four, and then the five ball. I want to show you how I want you to think and how I want you to approach these shots for now. You don't have to aim this way for the rest of your life. I want you to use the information I'm giving you as answers and tools. You can test your own perception to see if you can improve. For years, you know, for the history of the pool, we all came up and said, okay, I want to hit it right there. And then we come back and we try to hit right there, but we don't give enough conscious thought to which part of the cue ball we're going to hit there. Some people say don't worry about it, your brain's a magnificent tool, it's the best thing on the planet, but you know what? It's not perfect. We all have perception flaws. Memory flaws, hand-eye flaws, hand-eye coordination flaws, whatever. Some people have a higher level of perception. I know personally my brain was naturally picking out the wrong parts of the cue ball on certain shots. And I still have a tough time overriding my brain when it comes to those shots. 